Coming up, a very special custom knife for the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway for July. We'll take a look at that. In the state of the collection, two new ones sent to me by Savivi Senkut. Pretty cool ones, I got to say. And then we'll talk about great pool knives. These are summer weight folders that won't break the bank or pull down your swim trunks. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back. Uh, one of my favorite comments from this past week was uh, commented on the on last week's supplemental talking about uh, near knife nasty uh, little implements, things that are like knives, but uh, adjacent. I carry a Winkler pick that has the tip handle sticking out of my front sling bag. It's super fast to deploy faster than a knife than any knife or gun and this is from knife toucher which by the way when i was in college there was a, a great college band where i was called girl toucher i always thought that was kind of hilarious uh nowadays we can't find that funny but uh knife toucher uh i like this because i've had one of those winkler picks here on loan from a buddy of the show and those things are impressive slabs but also extremely useful i would imagine in uh in all sorts of different uh, combat adjacent roles. Uh, they talk about people cracking open uh, crates with K bars. Well, you take one of those Winkler picks and you're, you're in that thing pretty quick. Um, but, but that's what I'm talking about when it comes to knife adjacent uh, and gun adjacent tools that can be used uh, in a pinch um, for self-defense and maybe could be seen as something else at the same time. Uh, Thanks for that knife toucher. Appreciate it. Next from Preacher2727. You seem so confused about knives. You say one thing and then try to correct yourself. I'm out. So I'm I'm honored that uh between preaching the Lord's word, you have time to come comment on me. And yeah, but it is true. I am confused always. Uh, I'm confused about knives in, in a sense. Uh, I'm confused about why we're so drawn to them, but positively we are. Uh, so that's, um, you know, it is a mystery. There are many mysteries. I know as a preacher, you know that there are great mysteries in faith. And uh, well, uh, it's too bad you're out, but thanks for the status update. Greatly appreciated. All right. That said, let us now get to our pocket check. It wasn't long until I was back to the to a microtech. You know, I went through a vicious microtech phase recently, and by vicious, I mean vicious on the pocketbook, uh, on the wallet. There were a couple of knives there I had to buy, and uh, yeah, it took me a while to save up for them, but they are great knives. I'm so glad I have them, and this is one of them. Um, I was carrying this a lot, and then recently I went to Blade Show, as you know, and I got the integral, the Eck integral uh, from George, uh, Les George and Alan Alishowitz, and so that has been dominating uh, my pocket carry for a few weeks now, uh, but had to get back to Microtech today, and uh, this is what I went for. Uh, have some chores we've been doing that require a lot of uh, cardboard cutting, but also uh, kind of rough plastic cutting. And so I put this in my pocket thinking it might be used for that. It wasn't. Uh, but I love this thing. And I'm really sold on the serrations. Um, so much so I, I was sold on the serrations by D-Ring, a D-Ring video where he was showing off for Microtech the, the toughness of the SOCOM Elite. And in that destruction test uh, and video, he pulls out his own Elite, which he'd been carrying for 20 years, and it had serrations that were never sharpened. And they still went through the rope faster than a brand new straight edge uh, SOCOM. And that so impressed me, I kind of have gravitated towards partially serrated Microtex. I have a bunch of them, actually a majority of them. Um, I'm such a nerd about it that when I was at Blade Show, I saw D-Ring, he was working at their booth, uh, but I saw him, I don't know, maybe leaving the concession stand or the bathroom <laughs> one way or another. I kind of ambushed him while he was walking. D-Ring, I really like your video. And and he's like, oh, great. You know, have you seen my main channel where I'd I'm like, yeah, I'm sure it's awesome. But uh, 
so anyway, I told him about uh, how he turned me on to serrations. It was a big geek moment for me. He was like, great. Yeah, nice to meet you. And he took off. He's probably like, what a weirdo. This place, man. Um, all right. Next up, in, in lieu of a slip joint, I've been carrying this a lot. This is the new Jack Wolf Knives um, fixed EDC. This is the first fixed blade knife uh, by Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, I'm loving this sheath, a very well-researched and super durable, tough leather, uh, yet supple and nice. You can look at the surface of that leather and see the quality of it, but it's uh, really nicely done, I got to say. I only once have poked the tip through uh, through there, and I don't think I severed any stitches, oddly enough. Maybe I did. Maybe that's just wishful thinking, but uh, I have been uh, careful not to do this. Uh, horse down on it. This is a this is a, a BPS. Uh, it's a um, bushcraft knife with this sort of traditional pouch style sheath, and you kind of jam it in there. Make sure it's really uh, securely seated in there, and so when you're out doing your your woodland adventures, there's no threat of it coming out. Uh, you cannot do that with a with a knife like this because the blade is super thin and super hollow ground and very, very, very pointy. So if you jam this down in the bottom of any kind of sheath, uh, be it a, a pouch sheath or a, a sheath like this, it's going to go through stuff because that's what that tip does. Uh, so gorgeous uh, stone ground, not stone ground, stone washed uh, S90V blade, the same three inch length as the Midnight Jack, and then a smaller handle, about a three and a half finger handle. For me, I can basically get all four on if I'm right up there. Um, but definitely using this slope back here in the coffin style handle, that that facet. Uh, the facet on the bottom side a lot has a hidden lanyard post, which I really like. I put this little leather fob on there, and it makes it easier to draw out of the sheath. Um, or this pocket slip, but also uh, gives you room to uh, express your hand grip, <laughs> room to express your grip. You're you don't have to crowd yourself onto this little handle. Cool thing about this is when it's out, it basically has the length, or actually, it's a little bit shorter than an opened slip joint. And the idea being, when it's in the sheath, it's not too obtrusive by being uh, too large. So uh, the the size quote unquote sacrifice is in the handle and then that you can supplement with a fob i really like that it is definitely gentleman's carry um uh fixed blade and by the way it has a really excellent and stout clip that clip is not slipping off your pants at all your your pocket so you're you're good to go there uh really nice ambidextrous ambidextrous or ambidextrous, however that's actually pronounced, sheath, and um, nicely done. So uh, just did a, a, a conversation with Ben Belkin about the design, designing of this. Uh, it's a, definitely a good conversation. Uh, next up, uh, carrying today the TKL Knives Agent 002. This is, I don't know if you'd call it a prototype, uh, because... They're all, they're dialed in, they're in the works. This is just an early one that he finished and brought to Blade Show. There are gonna, gonna be a couple tweaks or at least one tweak I know of, uh, which is uh, chamfering the edges of the jimping there so that it's uh, less saw-like on the thumb, uh, which it isn't right now. It's a little aggressive, a little aggressive, uh, but let me try and get focus here. All right, so this is the handle of the uh, Agent 001 with the blade, with a Warncliffe blade, basically. And this blade here is amazing. Now, uh, yes, it, it is intended as a self-defense uh, knife, but I got to say, the reason I've been carrying this is for the same reason I had the stitch. Uh, we've been uh, putting in these uh, these plastic pool tiles on the locker room floor at our local pool on which uh, my wife serves on the board, if you will. And uh, so uh, this has been cutting through plastic when necessary. Uh, <laughs> it turns out we don't need to cut through it. I was just kind of cutting through it because I thought, because I wanted to use this knife basically, but also uh, did a, has done a great job on all the boxes that we had to break down for it. But also the handle here, the puño here, uh, this pommel part, 
has worked great as a as a what do you call it? Improvised percussive device, uh, improvised hammer, basically, which was not really intended. Of course, that's a little glass breaker, but it, I wasn't really thinking of that. I was thinking of that surface more as a thumb grip. But yeah, it works great as a little mallet or 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 hammer. So that's what I've been using it for, basically cutting cardboard, unnecessarily cutting plastic, which later I regretted, and then using that to to basically lock these two mechanisms together that were a serious pain in the ass, pain in the butt. And uh, I did end up getting a mallet and a ball peen hammer. Those all they all work three or equally well. So I do love the Agent 002. I will be very excited to show that off when when it uh, when it comes out. And there will be others designed by others, uh, you know, other designers putting blades on on this agent handle. So very, very cool. Okay, last uh, for emotional support, I had the DC Knives Scythe designed by Justin of Tier 1 Gear Reviews. He is one half of DC Blades. They've put out a lot of very cool, uh, very aggressive designs. I shouldn't say a lot of designs. They have uh, a number of them and growing. He's got one that's coming out that is so cool uh, with a handle similar to this in that it gives you a place to put your thumb and, uh, like a bird's beak on the on the pommel. This one uh, is a berry in your hand. This is the XL uh, titanium scythe, and it buries in your hand so nicely. It's a little bit longer than the original uh, gear pattern backspacer, which goes all the way around the puño, which is perfect for putting your thumb on. It gives you such an awesome grip. This, of course, is intended for self-defense uh, in that Pical style grip with the tip down and the edge in, and taking advantage of the natural arcing uh, motions of your uh, elbow and shoulder and your caveman adrenaline dump energy. Uh, this is a very good self-defense knife for that purpose. And this is made by Shielden, so I guess it's maybe it's the Shielden knives scythe designed by DC Blades because that's how it that's how it seems with the maker's mark and uh, the pivot very very nicely contoured titanium here uh, on the handle filler tab and then this cool sort of todd Begg style rollerball clip um i love this knife so much and i gotta say i'm so grateful to justin he just handed that to me out of his pocket when i saw him at blade show and i'm i'm really grateful because i i really really like that knife and of course i don't have an endless budget to get every knife i really like so uh i'm honored to have it i'm honored the way it came to me and it's really cool to have an addition to my folding to call collection all right what did you have in your pocket i had the dc blade scythe uh, by shielden i had the Agent T uh, TKL Knives Agent 002 prototype. I had the fixed EDC by Jack Wolf Knives and the Ramlock Stitch by Microtech. Uh, drop yours down below. Let me know what you had. Look at this action. Oh, so nice. This is so cool. Great. My favorite crossbar lock, I think, besides one that's going to be in the list uh, later on here uh, of pool knives. All right. Before we get to. Uh, Knife Life News, I want to show you the knife we're going to be giving away for this month's Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. Gentleman Junkie, as you know, is the high-tier uh, Patreon supporter. That's $10 a month over there at Patreon. And every month we do a knife giveaway uh, in appreciation to those folks. This month, it is a custom knife uh, by Brent Smith of Bald Man Knife and Tool. And uh, he's a great guy. He's been on the show before, and um, I've met him twice. Well, I've met him in person thrice. And this last time, uh, he gave me this and another one, which I am uh, going to buy for myself uh, once I review it. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm doing it that way, but he kind of insisted. Uh, this one we are giving away. This is his thick atross. Now, this is a thick version. He does. Uh, quarter inch thick versions of all his knives so he'll have a thinner version and then a thick version the thick atross is a thick version of the albatross whose uh, profile is this a very nice pointy utilitarian drop point with a sort of continuous belly but here 
It's in quarter inch thick Magna Cut. And it is wickedly sharp, incredibly sharp, uh, somewhat wedge like in cross section, but broad enough that uh, it's a it's a good slicer. Um, you're like a wedge slicer, huh, Bob? Well, I guess what I mean is it 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 is pretty thin behind the edge, it, but it gradually comes to this shoulder. And um, well, anyway, with paper, it cuts really well. Got to be honest, haven't cut anything more than that. Uh, but that will be up to you, uh, the gentleman junkie who wins this uh, beautiful knife. The, the G10 is layers of G10 alternating with a sort of rubber-like uh, material, and it gives it a very, very gently a grippy texture, uh, like my hogtooth knives, EDC Tonto, man. I love the material a lot. I, I wish I had it on more knives. Um, I think maybe people are spooked by the idea of rubber, like it's going to be like some grippy dive handle or something, but it's not like that at all. Feels real good. Uh, really good in hand, uh, especially with those, uh, grooves those are anzo grooves i think that's like an anzo pattern okay so bald man knife and tool custom knife do you have a custom knife do you have a custom fixed blade do you have one with a swedge and a drop point and a really nice point by the way if you needed to uh in reverse grip this would be a very nice uh defensive option you know for a small knife uh this is basically a do everything and the other one that i have uh which i don't have on the table with me um I know from a buddy who was working with him uh, who's been using this uh, that knife uh, on a construction site and doing all sorts of obscene things with it, uh, you know, pounding it into concrete and that kind of thing and having it having it work really well. So uh, Brent Smith has dialed in his grinding. He's dialed in his uh, heat treating and he's using Magna Cut, which is pretty awesome. So uh, if you're interested in that knife and winning it, you can become a gentleman junkie. Uh, just go to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon and uh, uh, sign up there. Check out what there is, uh, what you get. You could also be a tactical junkie at five or a traditional junkie at three. Uh, just scan the QR code on your screen or go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Woods Monkey Curve Carver is back in stock while supplies last. These are made in the USA by LT Wright Knives with a Scandi ground blade of AEBL stainless steel. The new Benchmade Bushcrafter has been upgraded with carbon fiber scales secured with hollow titanium tubes. The Super Tough Crew Wear Blade has a protective black Cerakote finish and a sharpened choil for easily striking a fire steel. And the new Bodacious is a USA-made workhorse designed by Spiderco co-founder Sal Glesser. It features nested stainless steel liners with smooth G10 scales and Spiderco's patented compression lock. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. thenifejunkie.com slash free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. New England custom knife maker Chuck Gadritis and Boker Knives are back with their follow-up to this knife, uh, the beautiful and acclaimed Smatch It, um, which is a tribute to the uh, famous William Fairbairn Smatch It, a, a large double-edged war knife, battle knife from World War II. Not meant to be a tool, definitely meant to be a weapon. Well, Together, uh, Chuck Adritis and Boker came up with this amazing folding tribute to it. I love this knife. Um, well, they have a new one. It's based on basically the Rex Applegate uh, knives. And we know Boker has made a lot of Rex Applegate uh, daggers over the years. Uh, this one pays homage to those knives, uh, like the Applegate Fairbairn and the Applegate knives, uh, with this beautiful folder. Look at this thing. Uh, really nice bayonet ground blade, uh, very pointy and sharp. That is 4.13 inches, which just warms the cockles of my heart. This one is also a, uh, well, this is straight four inches, so that's going to be even a little bit larger. But we see some of that, uh, some of the groove patterning and the handle continue. And uh, there's a one side only, right pocket side only sculpted pocket clip, which I imagine looks like this one or a similar. 
So I'm very, very excited for this one. Uh, my Carta handles a thumb disc and uh, out on August 2nd. That blade, by the way, is VG10, if I didn't mention it. Also VG10 on the Smatch It. Uh, so check that one out. Uh, very excited about that. All right, next up, this one I checked out at Blade Show and liked a lot. It's called the Bowfin, and it's the, a new one by Rosecraft Blades. This is not in the Rosecraft Blades uh, line that I usually talk about here, the uh, traditionals. This is in the modern knives. Uh, I've shown you the Easton, and uh, it, that is a really good modern knife. I had not really exposed myself to them uh, until Blade Show. And uh, this one I really like. It reminds me a little bit of the barong I'm always talking about that I like so much. It's called the bow fin, and it has an overall bow shape with that arched uh, overall handle, arced handle. It's by designer uh, Chaz Snyder. I think I got that right. Or is it Charles? I'm sorry if I abbreviated in my notes Chaz, and you actually don't go by that. But uh, Mr. Snyder designed this. A uh, very nice 3.7 inch. So another big blade and look at how broad that blade is so this thing is really nice in hand i can say uh, firsthand uh air rpm 9 blade uh thumb studs and a front flipper uh, so i like that and a button lock and only 4.9 ounces i say only because it's a pretty darn big blade uh already out uh check it out and this one i can vouch for um personally all right, next up uh, from Best Tech Man. Best Tech Man is the budget line from Best Tech. And they've had a very slow dribbling of designs. Um, and, and I got to say, like, it feels like you got to come out with a little more momentum if you're going to come out with a new brand, at least like come out with a, with a, a lineup and, and really hammer it. But they came out with the Best Tech Man. Uh, the, the first one, I don't remember what it was called. It was nice, uh, designed by Ostop Hell. So a good, uh, but I, I would like to see more from them because I love Best Tech. So Best Tech Man is, is uh, kind of, it's already baked in that it's good. This one is called the Cicada Wing. Uh, and it has got a really cool blade. That reminds me a bit of a, a chef's knife. It's like a Santoku almost. Uh, on a pretty, uh, you know, neutral ergonomically neutral handle uh, with a crossbar lock. I know that Best Tech Man does a good crossbar lock. Um, D2, three inches. Uh, this one is, of course, Cerakoted red with that white handle. Uh, sort of evocative of Star Wars, I think, right? Isn't that right? Uh, I don't know if that was the intention, but they also have an all-black model coming out. 2.11 ounces uh, and out soon so 2.11 ounces for a three inch blade that's pretty that's pretty light so uh keep your eyes peeled for that uh, that looks like a very useful blade gotta say cicada wing uh i do like cicadas and thankfully we sort of avo avoided this horrible uh year for cicadas we didn't have any i mean i haven't heard any so far uh, i guess i should knock on wood all right, last up, you know, I'm into Civivis. I, I can't I can't put them down. I can't quit you, Civivi, even though I want to. Like uh, my buddy, my friend, Jaime, gave me this. It was a little too small for him. Uh, this is a Ferrum Forge knife, and I love it. I love it. I haven't carried it. Uh, I think I've dropped it in the bag, but um, it just kind of sits around and gets fiddled with. Uh, but very nice knife. I love Civivis uh, up and down, whether they're in my wheelhouse or not in terms of size. This new one is definitely in my wheelhouse because it looks cool and it's got an awesome uh, double peaked clip point blade. Let's take a look at it. It's called the Biophase. The Biophase. Uh, this, this one here is, as you can see, a black uh, coated blade um, uh, that uh, maroon on top the maroon scale which is very web like is g10 and then the handle of uh, the frame is steel uh the other two versions of this uh that g10 on top is replaced with aluminum so but they all have that sort of web like um build something that we don't see from civivi ever i think this is a very uh new sort of thing kind of a complex liner and handle scale there it is um uh, and handle scale uh, configuration here. This one is uh, green 
steel and then anodized aluminum. But I'm loving that deeply hollow ground, double peaked Bowie blade. It reminds me a bit of the SOG, uh, you know, the, the, the famed Mac V SOG style knife, but futuristic in those three opening holes in that uh, depressed divot on both sides. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could probably middle finger flick and thumb flick that uh, with with no problem. That is 3.48, so basically three and a half inches of Nitro V um, and a bottom flipper. Very cool knife. Only three ounces because it's missing a lot of stuff and no release date yet. I'm excited about this one. This one will definitely uh, I'll, I'll have to get and put in my Civivi collection, which is totally unintentional. I just can't. It's hard. You know, I've given some away recently and it's it's hard to do. They're such great knives. OK. Uh, all right. Well, that does it for this edition of the uh, Knife Life News. Uh, next up, we're going to go to the state of the collection and check out another Civivi and a send cut. Uh, but before we do, I want to ask you to download the show to your favorite podcast app or uh, best is to share the show. If you think that there's someone in your life who's got a, a latent blade habit uh, just waiting to be uh, enabled, please send me their way. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Or you can just uh, go to one of these podcast apps and and uh, or, or all of them and subscribe, but only ever listen to it on one. That's what I do with most of the shows I like. All right, coming up, State of the Collection, right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Adventure Delivered. Your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So we talked about this knife uh, on Knife Life News a few weeks back. Uh, this is the new Sencut Excalis. And I remember kind of dishing on the name, oh, Excalis, rolls right off the tongue. And I remember stating, and, and I think this was a little bit of influence from Ben Schwartz of Knife News, but how it's just kind of a hmm, run-of-the-mill, it's going to sound uh, negative, but it's a very sort of plain and utilitarian EDC uh, knife uh, as of 2024. Uh, the bells and whistles are no longer really bells and whistles. Like this has caged ceramic bearings, which at one point was a big deal. Uh, this is just a very competent, that's not even the right word. This is just a very capable and well done knife uh, that doesn't have much to, to write home about. And I got to say, having it in hand, uh, it's really won me over. Uh, let me start first with the blade. That is 9CR18 MOV, a blade steel that they have, uh, that Civivi uh, cut their teeth on and and continues to do in a really great way in Sencut. And Civivi still uses it, I believe. Uh, but this blade shape, I love this blade shape. And in pictures, I was kind of uh, ambivalent about it. Let me put something white behind it to really make it pop. This is... This is the sheet. Uh, I'll use this one. This, these are the product sheets that came with it. Look at that. Yeah, that is a cool. Now, to me, this this is a better looking 940 blade. This is as if they took a 940 and compressed it this way. And it didn't fold. It just sort of uh, reshaped. You've got that great clip point up front. Uh, putting the point center line. So you always know where that point is, no matter how you're oriented uh, with the blade. But you get some strength in that sort of diamond shape that happens with the clip. And then you have an actual clip uh, that, that is a great place to put your finger or um, uh, just thins out the blade and makes it easier in a sort of uh, thrust or puncturing motion. Now, this is not a self-defense knife. Of course, it could be used as one. Uh, so when I say thrust, I'm talking about uh, you're, you're opening clamshell packages and doing other knife-like stuff with it. Um, and then you have this nice continuous belly here, uh, but you have a usable portion of it that it may as well not be curved. Uh, it's so so gently curved. Um, I really like this knife. Uh, the handle is, though a little bit short, it's broad, so it gives you a lot to hold on to. Uh, in my uh, rule of small knives, if it's got a 
a short handle, meaning from here to here. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't call that uh, a, a knot. If it has a tall handle, it can be short in length. If it's got a short in length handle, it has to be wide uh, to make it a good small knife. If something's got to give, you can't have both uh, without it being an uncomfortable small knife to use. So the handle is totally dialed in, very comfortable, as neutral as can be, uh, but also, uh, you know, gives you a very sure grip in the standard grip here. Off the shelf pocket clip. This is the one I like without the holes, the non ventilated pocket clip. Uh, let's see if I. I might have a, a ventilated pocket clip around here. So yeah, like here's a one I, I don't care for as much. Uh, also speed holes, four speed holes. I like that. It lightens up the knife, obviously, and it looks cool. And if you do need to reorient your grip, uh, it helps you hold on as you do so. Um, so uh, I really like this knife. This is, uh, let's see, let me let me tell you about the... I want to see if I got the, yeah, 58 to 60 Rockwell hardness on the 9CR818 MOV. Yeah, very cool. 2.9 inches. I said three inches. I, I was in error. Uh, it also comes in a, oh, this is this is a cool lineup. Black and black, which is what I have. A white and, and uh, white and satin. A black and green uh, micarta and a geoborsia wood and a satin. So very, very uh, diverse group of um, colorways you can get it in and materials. And uh, I like it a lot. This is a good one. And what is it? Uh, 47 bucks. Obviously, I'm sorry. Map pricing is 40 bucks on these things. So 40 bucks. Uh, the next one is the Savivi of the group that they sent me. This one is Really cool. Uh, this one is definitely making it. I have a feeling the Excalis is going to be a, a giveaway knife. This one, this one, I have to adopt or foster for a while at least. Uh, this is a Brian Brown design, and I don't have anything by Brian Brown. Uh, his knives are pretty pricey, and you got to and 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 his knives are smaller than I like to spend that money on. Uh, but they are beautiful knives, and he's a great designer. So this is an awesome opportunity to have a Brian Brown design and have some of the hallmarks of his design in a great, wonderfully built, inexpensive uh, production knife. So uh, I've been, I have been carrying this a bit uh, as an um, uh, emotional support knife, and it's great. It's great. Okay, so it's got a sheep's foot blade, or almost a, like a cleaver blade, but a nice point deeply hollow ground comes gets really thin behind the edge you've got a fuller here that allows for uh middle finger flicking or thumb flicking on a majority of the blade so it's grippy all the way down to about here you have an excellent sharpening toil per usual with Civivi. uh really nice jimping those three jimps really grip the thumb nicely here's brian brown's logo and uh, Maker's Mark, which is nice to have on a blade. <laughs> I'll take it. You know, my goal, my sort of unofficial goal with my collection, uh, among other goals, is to have a knife by everyone I've interviewed. And that's not going to happen, uh, but I can get close. And a knife like this allows that for me because... You know, uh, like I said, Brian Brown knives, you kind of have to pursue them and really want them to get them. Uh, they seem hard to get uh, when they drop and stuff like that. So this is a great way to get that. Uh, Keenness and Knives, another great example. They just came out with the Blue Tick, I believe. The uh, Everything is named after hounds and dogs by uh, Keenness and Knives. But they have a knife that you can get from Civivi now. Uh, in the $60 range. And and those are one-of-a-kind, custom-made, incredible uh, knives, the knives that come out of Keenison. So um, it's great to see companies like Civivi um, doing deals with great designers and makers so that guys like me can uh, have them without you know, going poor <laughs> or, or spending all my time looking for them. I'm sorry, I didn't even tell you what this one is called or give you any details. Let me finish. Uh, Nitro V, uh, deeply hollow ground. Nitro V uh, at 58 to 60 Rockwell. Uh, this is the 
green micarta with black stone wash which is gorgeous they're calling it a reverse tanto okay whatever i'm not gonna fight i'm, I'm tired um it also comes in the jaborsha wood if that's how it's pronounced uh with um with uh a what do you call it stainless damascus and then it also comes in an ivory g10 which is very nice off-white g10 and a satin finish that also looks beautiful great action on this and what a cut this thing is a great great cutter uh this is just going to do you know you you got actual cutting chores this thing will be great uh the ergonomics are nice it does have a large sharpening choil, as I mentioned, that you can kind of cheat with if you have thin fingers. But, I mean, I wouldn't, and and I have thick. So kind of a larger-than-usual sharpening choil or smaller-than-usual finger choil. Uh, but a great knife, fidgety as the day is long, and just full of style without being too much. All right, so that is it for the state of the collection. Now I want to talk about great pool knives. Uh, I was talking about earlier about how I was using this in installing a locker room tile, um, that plastic stuff that keeps your feet off the floor. Um, and it got me thinking about all the, you know, we're back in pool season. We have a community pool. Do you have one or do you have your own pool? Um, but I'm now in swim trunks a lot of the time. And uh, there are only certain knives that I carry in that situation or, or even in light shorts, uh, workout shorts. Uh, I find myself in too because they're light and it gets hot here in Virginia. Uh, so these are some of the knives that are uh, great for the pool. Uh, and part of that is if you lose it, it's not going to, you're not going to break the bank and it's not going to be the most heartbreaking thing though. You can grow attachments to anything. Uh, but these knives won't won't put you out too much. There's one here that's over a hundred bucks, but there's only one. I'm going to start with this very researched group, and I'll say it's researched not only by me, but I have um, uh, I have fostered some of the knife junkies in the neighborhood. Uh, like I mentioned, Jaime, who gave me this, he's a neighborhood knife junkie now, and uh, love it. And he has a thing for Civivis. And he spread that word to another friend. So lately, I've seen two of these just hanging out on the table next to kids' snacks and things that have been cut up. And that is the Civivi Mini Praxis. Uh, the Mini Praxis is a $30 version of the original full-size Praxis. The full-size Praxis has a 3.7-inch blade and uh, you know, run you about 60 bucks, uh, depending on the, the material you get it in, handle material. Uh, but this, 30 bucks and a small version of it, not as threatening. That is just barely three inches. I think it's a 2.93 inch blade. Uh, this one was also given to me by Jaime, actually. He thought this was too small, moved on to the large Praxis. Um, so this one has, uh, well, has seen a lot of action at the pool and then was given to me and is continuing to see a lot of action at the pool. And then our other friend had one in black and satin the other night. Whose is this? Oh, my God, this is great. I love it. I love just seeing random Civivis hanging out at the pool. It's not what you're expecting to see. Uh, this knife has a great finger choil. We were talking finger choils before. Full size uh, for that this small size knife. This, of course, in the G10. Uh, I believe it only comes with a G10 handle. I have not yet seen this one with a micarta handle. One of uh, one in the minority of Civivi knives that's uh, nearly full flat ground. This one is so thin. I mean, the steel is super thin, uh, nice and light. And again, 30 bucks cut with style, cut any kind of food stuff or whatever you're going to be cutting at the pool. Uh, for sure. This is a great and classy option. Uh, also small and will not will not be a huge heartbreak if you lose it. But don't lose it. All right, next up. This is the most expensive one on the list, but um, I have found myself carrying it again this year. This is kind of a summertime knife for me, actually. Uh, and that is the Demco uh, AD 20.5 with the Shark Lock. This was the first uh, non-cold steel and non-custom Demco knife to be released. And this was in that first batch. Uh, so it was when this was only in gray and in Aus 10. And uh, here it's with the 
in my opinion, ugly shark's foot blade, but I had to get it because it's unique and unique to them. I still need to get around to getting a clip point version of this. Now it comes in different blade materials and different uh, handle colors, and I think it comes in G10 also. Um, this is a great knife, though. I, I, I remember I got this right before my 50th birthday, three summers ago now, and carried it on my 50th birthday and and carved a whole bunch of uh, bamboo tiki torches made them sharp to to stick in the dry ground yeah me hard using my knives i i remember that in particular this was a great knife for that and uh, very comfortable to use that shark lock is so great and it's so strong and it's one of the best innovations by demco uh andrew demco who's I just saw this past uh, couple of weeks ago. They're going to come back on the show. Got to have that taken care of. Um, one of his best innovations, but I mean, he he designed the triad lock and a number of other great locks. Uh, but this one, the 80 20.5, a great uh, flex at the pool, no doubt. Okay, next up, this one uh, on paper, I would say, hmm, maybe not. Uh, but it just so happens to have tagged along a lot. So it, it has been a great pool knife. This is the Openel uh, number eight. And there would be two reasons why I'd say, oh, what, really? And one of them is you're around water at a pool, and usually they are 1095. But this one happens to be uh, Enox or stainless steel model uh, that I got at um, REI years ago. And it's done the rounds. It used to be at work and then it came home ended up in the pool bag uh, nice and thin uh this one is great for food i gave my mom one of these and she takes it uh they travel a lot and when they travel they if they eat out that it'll be one meal and then they always have like food that they take along and do picnics and stuff and she loves it for that purpose um it is a great food knife i have one a number 10 that's larger that I have customized the handle and um, patinaed the blade. And it's uh, one of my going out to dinner steak knives. It's excellent. These are great cutters, very thin, easy to sharpen, easy to keep sharp. Uh, the Enox or the, the uh, stainless happens to be great for the pool. The one, the one benefit or not benefit, the one drawback is the wooden handle. Um, if anyone has open L's here, you know that when that gets wet, and, and it swells, well, it's it's swelling up and being held in by uh, two rings of steel. So it makes, uh, something's got to give in that case, and it gives inward, so it makes it more difficult to open. But we don't really have open L's for the action, right? I mean, I this one has been swing shut before, uh, but uh, definitely not necessary and uh, no need for that. So... Even if it does get a little wet and it swells up a little, I don't care. It gets wet even if I'm not going to the pool because oftentimes I use these for food and I'm going to clean it. And oftentimes water will get down there in the base. So uh, a great knife. Also, these here are uh, 20 bucks. Uh, so an open L like this is 19 bucks. They used to be like 12 and then they cr crept up to 15, you know. They're keeping up with inflation, and uh, they're still very, very inexpensive. The French peasant knife, you know, Sford makes makes a Swedish peasant knife, and, you know, Americans have the sod buster. Not that that's a peasant knife, but you know what I mean, like a working man's farm knife kind of thing. Well, that's what the open L is. Uh, all right, next up, this one I love and, and haven't paid much attention to since last pool season, and out it comes, and I'm resolving to carry it more. And that's the CJRB Large Pyrite. Uh, I used to take the regular pyrite, the 3.25 inch pyrite, to the pool a lot. And then a friend of mine there needed a knife. I gave it to her. And then recently her husband lost his 940. And so he grabbed her pyrite, which which burned her up because he, he uses knives real hard. Um, anyway. It's uh, all's well that ends well. He got a new 940. She got her pie right back, and it's still in good shape. Anyway, this one is mine, and I love that that hunter green micarta. It's a really nice, even weave canvas micarta, very thin slabs on both sides. Feels great, and again, it's a broad handle. 
So it's though it's slender this way, it's broad in hand. So it's not it's it's comfortable and it's not going to turn uh, in your hand as you use it. Um, the liners sit just a little proud, which I like. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to pick this up when it's freezing cold or burning hot. I'm not sure if that would make it uncomfortable. I know that if uh, it didn't have that, it'd probably be more comfortable. My car doesn't really conduct too much in the way of heat or cold. Um, great button lock on this. I think I think CJRB does the best button lock, I think, or in, in my collection anyway, because instead of cutting out a cone into which the button, the uh, flange on the button is is always being pushed ever further into, it's milling out a perfectly sized and shaped notch. So that that flange locks in there perfectly with uh, zero tolerance. Um, and so I think that's the way to do it. I think the other way, which is more common, which is to have that cone shape and then have the square flange kind of be constantly the idea is is as the flange wears away it's going to push ever deeper with that spring tension into that cone yeah i don't buy it and it also i think allows for um thing for it to pop open and it also uh, it also allows for uh more slop in manufacturing if you will so i think C cjrb did a great job that blade a a a r a r r p m nine <laughs> say that twice in a row um nicely broad beautifully shaped blade uh for a drop point anyway um very nice center line point that's kind of like a spear point and nice in the way of the sharpening choil so just a great knife big this one is a four inch blade this might be too much for you uh but they do have the regular version, which comes in that blade style and in a gorgeous Warncliffe. I wish they would bring the Warncliffe out in this large version. Uh, these run you 60 bucks in the large version. 60 bucks, people. 60 bucks. So a great knife. This is a really great knife. All right, next up, another really great knife. And uh, if you're an old fan of the show, you know I used to carry this a lot in my waistband uh, back in the day. Uh, this is the uh well in this case it's the broken skull this profile has gone through various iterations with cold steel now it's called the range boss and it has instead of g10 handles uh thin g10 handle scales it has thin gfn handle scales instead of in this case xhp which they later changed to s35vn before they um, discontinued this model um in, in the Range Boss case, it has 4034, I believe, Krupp steel. So different uh, different grade steels, but the same size and um, same profile. And you know it's sharp as hell. It's just going to not be as uh, luxurious in handle material, and it will take uh, less time to dull the blade. Uh, just incidentally, um, when I sat down to breakfast with Lynn Thompson, guess who's coming to breakfast? Uh, it was a great, we had a great breakfast and I, it was unintentional. I just said hi to him and he came over and sat down uh, with his friend Richard and we just ate and talked for an hour, but he had this in his, uh, front pocket in his breast pocket of his shirt. And he had a little flap that was covering it over and, and, uh, he had the blue one, not the pink one, no surprise, but, uh, he was singing the praises of this knife and, uh, and then I, I mentioned that they don't make it anymore. And then he said, well, you can you can get it in the range, boss. And that's still an awesome steel. And, um, I love it because it's thin. It's light. It's a four inch blade, fully flat ground, super slicer. In my case, you pull this out. It's like a big black Bowie knife, but it's got a pink handle and and a little pink ear here. What's that little pink pink bow for? You know, it's for waving it open out of your pocket or out of your um out of the waistband of your swimsuit nice and thin nice and light super capable and stout stout as the day is long so if you like this design and you don't feel like going on ebay or somewhere to try and hunt down a uh, a broken skull in xhp or s35 vn you can now get the range boss in uh less premium materials but you know it'll still be an awesome knife and thin and small and stashable
And that's what you want. Uh, you want the most you can carry with the least amount of impact uh, in terms of carry. Next up, uh, I mentioned this the foreshadowing. There was some foreshadowing when I mentioned the Ram lock and how much I love it. And I said, this is my favorite crossbar lock, ex bar none, except for one, perhaps. And that is this one right here. The Kershaw. The Kershaw bar lock is, I think, the best. The best I've experienced. Uh, this is the Iridium. And I got this one. I've always been fond of the design. And then when they came out with the black one, I couldn't resist. I'm not sure why, because that's not my my main my usual protocol but i i loved how it looked in black so i got it and i absolutely love it it's got an incredible blade a d2 blade steel it's a spear point but with an oh an oddly asymmetric swedge that i like a lot uh, of course to lighten the blade but also thin it out and uh, give you less resistance when you're slicing but also when you're piercing nice uh i'm using nice a lot a usable straight length here a slight bit of uh, belly and then a center line point and well contoured aluminum handle scales, nice and light and uh, neutral. There it is again and neutral. You can hold it anyway and man alive. It feels great. This one to me feels luxurious. Uh, this was a made in America one, right? Is that right? Negative. This is not a made in America one, but that's okay. Uh, Feels nice and light in pocket, is nice and light, uh, very stout, and with this incredible action, always makes me grab it and test to make sure there's no blade play. Indeed, there is no blade play. It is just great, great, great action. The coating on the blade, I got to say, uh, looks like I've been using this. I've used it for years uh, at my job or something, but uh, that's not true. That's only like one batch of of Amazon boxes for the week or something like that. Uh, so not very much to mar the coating on this, but I don't care. I think it makes it look cool. So a great, great pool knife. This will definitely be getting a lot of use again this year. Deep carry pocket clip. Yep. There's only This is the only one. The Open L is the only one without the pocket clip because uh, honestly, it's got to clip into the pocket of the pool bag. Uh, the inside pocket of the pool bag where we keep our towels. This one ends up going in the uh, out, out, outboard pocket of our Yeti-like thing called Arctic. Okay, uh, next up, this is going to be a new one this year, um, and that is the Eutectic uh, Everyday uh, Field Duty. <laughs> the EFD, Everyday Field Duty. And this, oh, by the way, the Iridium is 68 bucks. Range Boss is 40 bucks. I, I keep forgetting the price. Uh, so if you want that Cold Steel Range Boss, it'll only set you back 40 and that Iridium 68. This, since I, I have it out, the EFD, this is the second most expensive one on this list at $85. If you don't know, Eutectic is the um, budget oriented or high value brand uh, from famed designer Leong Ma. And this one is based on his field duty. And his field duty knife has this basic uh, outline or this basic uh, uh, silhouette profile, but it's made by Riot with uh, bolsters and and titanium and nice materials and and different different kind of uh, treatments, uh, material treatments and such. So if you like that knife, but don't have the whatever it costs to buy it when it's available, uh, which is not frequently, you can get one of these Eutectics. And uh, Leong Ma sent two here. One we just gave away as a knife giveaway, a uh, knife junkie giveaway knife. And this one uh, kind of uh, nestled its way into my collection. Uh, I've, I'm fascinated by how, how much I actually like it because, <coughs> pardon me, it's really not much in my uh, in in my type of knife. You know, it's a it's a kind of a neutral drop point leaf shaped blade, uh, but and and kind of a neutral. I, I love it. I love it. It's nice and thin. It's nice and light. One side is has the liner. The other side is linerless G10, so it keeps it nice and light. The orange I'm loving. Um, I wouldn't have got it and gotten this myself in orange, but I'm really glad he sent it in orange. A, I don't have any orange knives. 
B, I don't have any Leong Ma knives until this. And C, the orange really helps to find it in the bag. Yes, it should be clipped in the bag, but I'm not the only one going in there. So oftentimes the knife will end up at the bottom. Um, so that orange makes it highly visible. Uh, 14C28N, really excellent front flipper action. I mean, this, this is just so easy to do with uh, either hand. Uh, or you can middle finger flick it, or you can use the thumb stud, or you can slow roll. I mean, it's just a fidgeter's daydream here. And you've got uh, ambidextrous pocket clip. This thing is great. And also uh, kind of in the similar spirit to the pink knife here, uh, but even more so, it, it looks friendly. You know, it's got a, like a, it's got a friendly look to it, you know, and that orange helps. That's the Eutectic um, ED, e, e, whew, excuse me, the Eutectic EFD. I do apologize. Uh, 85 bucks. Next up, this is a new one. This one, totally I came by a chance. Andy Armstrong gave it to me when I was talking to him at the Rosecraft booth. Um, that sounds like a name drop, but hey, that's what I do here. I guess I talk to a lot of people like this. Uh, and I was very, very grateful he gave me this knife. He wants to spread the word. I know he gave it to a lot of different knife fluencers. Huh, how do you like that? Knife fluencers. Now, if anyone says that they owe me money, we're going to work out how that, see how that works. Uh, so this is the Easton Easton, uh, two ends on that, uh, designed by, uh, in-house designed by, I think I, I didn't get the story, right? <laughs> uh, I think, uh, one of the designers, like the son of a designer or the son of an executive, design this it's really nice um uh, contoured g10 with the with the orange pivot collar is very handsome also feels great in the hand uh, i like that it's very wide here because you might be tempted to thrust with this great center line clip point tip uh but without a guard i like how it widens um substantially larger than the blade itself to give you a uh, kind of a stopping point um very nice uh, in reverse grip as well. You have a great uh, top to, to arc over. This, of course, is an EDC, but I always look at a knife through this lens. Uh, also, how would it be in Pakal? Well, very comfortable if you needed to, heaven forbid. Uh, very nice button lock on this one. Uh, uh, employ, employing that. This is more of a notch, actually. Um, that jimping is only felt when you're when you're front flipping it you cannot feel it when it's open it remains kind of buried i like that maker's mark that rosecraft blades maker's mark very cool uh kind of a stout grind here um it, i wouldn't have minded if they went higher with that grind but you know uh it it could be hard use it's sharp sharp enough um it's not very slicey i gotta say but it feels more like you could horse this through lots and lots and lots of cardboard or lots and lots and lots of, you know, something wood. You could even carve wood at the campsite with this. Uh, but I do know that uh, the past two weekends and, and uh, weekend nights, it's been coming to the pool. RCM. Okay. That's the, that's the maker's mark of the, of the, the designer. Yep, it might be 2024 pool knife of the year. I'm not sure. We will see. Uh, another one uh, that has been getting a lot of carry, period, uh, is the Kara Kara. This is the bird Kara Kara. And, um, well, it's a, uh, oh, by the way, the Easton. Sorry, before I go any further, the Easton, 60 bucks. 60 bucks for the Rosecraft Easton. That's a cool thing about their knives. They are super high quality, and yet, they keep them very inexpensive. Uh, the bird Kara Kara, while I'm on it, 48 bucks. Uh, this is the uh, inexpensive analog of the um, Endura. I like it because uh, it, it is less expensive. It's got the... Um, so bird, if you don't know, is the budget, a budget brand from Spyderco. Um, using 8CR13 MOV blade steel, which, you know... Um, they've used it quite a bit and they know how to use it. They know how to heat treat it. Um, and an FRN handle that is, it just has a slightly less finished feel than say an Endura or a Delica. 
this is in the indelica uh, yeah in the endura size range indelica this is in the endura size range and uh but it has a pointier blade i really like that it's got a, a more of a dagger like blade than the endura this one has the wave i got it because scott babb of libra knife fighting uh uses one of these in his videos and you know, it's just a kind of an inexpensive weapony tool here. Uh, I, of course, got it uh, since I'm on a serrations kick. Got it with those serrations. And uh, I have taken this a couple of times to the pool. And people always comment on that. Like, it looks weird to them. Spydercos already look weird. But knife junkies like uh, ourselves are used to that. So even within the weirdness spectrum of the Spyderco, this looks extra weird. And then you add the um serrations which are stepped in as opposed to say the serrations on um on this microtech uh where that where the serrations are uh the tips of the serrations are lower than the main edge which means uh, they did them first and then ground from there so uh, serrations are proud here here the main edge is proud and it also like gives you a nasty little hook there uh so if you were to use this in self-defense, draw it and have it in this position, like Scott Babb of Libra Knife Fighting, uh, you get quite a dagger. You get a uh, 3.7 inch blade that has quite a daggery tip. And then you have all of this nasty cutting um, serration portion. But at the pool, I'm cutting hot dogs. I'm cutting hamburgers. Uh, I'm cutting watermelon. That's pr particularly fun. And I'm cutting other stuff, mostly food, occasionally a tag off of something, uh, but mostly this, uh, mostly food. So this is a great knife for that. And if you lose it, you're only out 48 bucks. Next one, if you lose this one, you're only out 32 bucks. And this thing is outstanding. Uh, the time tested um, and uh, mother approved QSP penguin uh, this is the very original version of it with the blue jean micarta and the d2 blade steel i don't have to say much about this uh a high height flat grind very very sharp uh, excellent heat treat on this d2 i've never had to really do much to keep this thing going because this has been a, a desk knife for a little while now and uh, now with uh Pool season. This is uh, dusted off for that. Uh, this is one of those knives that is also very um, unthreatening with that tip, that sheep's foot blade, and um, the the blue G micarta kind of adds to it. It 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 just doesn't look like a scary knife. So you can pull this out and use this at the pool uh, without without any trouble. It's not it's not the lightest of the knives here. Most of these knives I haven't even mentioned their weights, but most of these knives are super light. This one. Uh, veers it doesn't have any uh, uh weight relief on those steel liners so it veers towards the uh heavier of the bunch but again at 32 bucks and with all of that non-threatening utility um you're not going to be heartbroken if you lose this you just will get another one no doubt or maybe you'll upgrade and get one in titanium uh, with a flipper and a, a fancy steel Last up, uh, like the very first one in this list, I've seen this one uh, from the same guys, same group of knife junkies on the table at the pool, and I love it. This happens to be what most of these dudes like to carry all the time lately. Uh, this is the, and most of those dudes are three guys. Uh, so shout out to, shout out to Jaime, Steve, and Keon. Uh, this is the Civivi, here, the Civivi Vision FG, uh, designed by Snex. A, a Malaysian designer who makes really, really cool and unique, and uh, uh, in and innovative in terms of engineering uh, designs. And this was the first time we saw his super lock in production uh, by Civivi. We was uh, the first one to actually come out with the with the vision, uh, but they made the FG for for slobs like you and me. Uh, really outstanding knife uh i know it looks like a utility knife all day long but when i have this in pocket i'm also confident in its ability to be a pretty nasty self-defense knife it's it's a thin slicey slashy blade uh with a down with a with a, well it's like a midline tip but it's a little bit lower uh, maybe it's uh 
yeah, it's kind of a worn cliffy uh, orientation, even though it's angled up like a Kiridashi. Uh, the, the ergonomics are great and neutral, so it's comfortable literally in any grip. It's equally comfortable. And then you got the speed holes again, like we saw on the Excelsis. So uh, I like that. <laughs> Though I got to say, actually, with the clip, that's not as uh, here we go on that last hole. That's the way to do it. Uh, but so, yeah, this one has been out um, and the uh, out on the table. One of them is white or that ivory with the Damascus. Very cool knife. All right. Well, I let me know what your favorite pool knives are or what you like to wear in the summer uh, when you're wearing the real light uh, workout shorts or the or or just mowing the lawn or you're in your bathing suit. Let me know what those favorite knives are. Uh, that's what these are for this year. I think I've done this show before. It seems familiar, but every year it changes. So uh, there you go. All right. Thanks for joining me. And uh, Jim, be sure to join us uh, for all the shows. We are not going to be doing a Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night, uh, if you're watching this as it drops, as I will be on vacation. So uh, have a wonderful end of June, and I'll see you the next time. Uh, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.